Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the video. In today's video, we're going to do a proper rig tour of this brand new pipeline style welding bed that we've been working on all year. For those of you that followed along during the bed build, you know that the last video that we did was of the tailboard. We did not get into the toolboxes like the organization and whatnot. So I'm excited to share that organization with you and my thoughts on toolbox organization. We'll get to that later in the video. For those of you that are new to the channel and haven't seen any of the bed building series, there will be a playlist in the description of this video so you can go catch up on anything that we talk about in this video because I'm going to try to talk about details about what thickness of material, what size of fittings we used here and there, and the radiuses and whatnot. I'm going to try to talk about those specs in this video, but if you want to see how it was done, check out the bed build series in the description of this video. I also wanted to take this moment to thank Stillwater Steel of Stillwater, Oklahoma. I want to thank Linex of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Titanium Diesel of Blackwell and Wilkins Truck Chrome out of Blackwell also. Wilkins is where I got my tail lights that we'll talk about here shortly. Real quick, before we jump into the rig tour, I did want to let you know that the pipe fence course is open for enrollment. It's been open for a little over a week now. If you've ever had any questions about the nitty gritty, gritty details of building pipe fence or a lack of confidence about getting started, uh, you know, the, the proper tools, maybe you want to build a better looking pipe fence for your own property, or maybe you want to do it as a business. There's a business section in the pipe fence course, whatever it may be, or maybe you want to learn uh, a little bit about a lot of different types of fence barbed wire, building braces for barbed wire, cable, sucker rod, a couple of others that we kind of touched on in the pipe fence course, you'll want to check it out. The goal with the pipe fence course was to save you time and money in the long run. Everything that I teach you in the course took me essentially 10 years to learn. So now you can learn it for 350 bucks. You can learn it in two weeks, less, more, that's another neat thing about it is you go at your own pace. There's no hurry whatsoever, but we do only open enrollment three or four times a year. That's why I wanted to let you know about it. It is currently open for enrollment. If you happen to be watching this video later on after the course is closed, you should be directed to a page that says join the wait list. By joining this wait list, you will get notified before usually, usually we try to mention it to our email list and the community text before I talk about it in a video. So if you want to get first heads up about when the pipe fence course opens for enrollment, we usually leave it open for, it depends on the time of year, but usually anywhere from a week to two or three weeks, something like that. And if you don't have 350 bucks right now, we've got payment plans. We've got lots of options. We want to add value to you and your family. That's why we're creating these online courses. Head on over to arosswelding.school and check out the pipe fence course if you're interested. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can text those questions to 405-643-7176 and myself or my wife Kayla will get back with you as soon as we can. I also want to thank Leo Martinez. He is behind the camera today. For those of you that have been following along, back whenever me and my wife vlogged on our family channel, Austin and Kayla, Leo was my welding partner that I met years ago in Ohio on a pipeline job. He had the pink welding machine, so. Howdy. Leo, uh, where are you from? How long have you been pipelining? Albuquerque, New Mexico, about a year and a half. He's here, he's actually here for the truck show because for the past couple of years, he's been driving a semi and he likes to come to the truck show there at Wilkins and I like to go and see him and we hang out while the truck show's going on there in Blackwell, Oklahoma. So we'll be headed there soon, but I wanted to thank Leo for being here and helping with this video. It's gonna make this rig tour a lot easier. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in. We'll start with the oxygen bottle rack. This is 10 gauge plate, uh, Stillwater Steel. That's why I wanted to thank Stillwater Steel and everybody that helped me put this thing together because I couldn't do it by myself because I don't have a roller or a brake press. So Stillwater Steel rolled this. They burned this out and of course I fabricated it which you can find in the uh, bottle video. So store still broke this and uh, two K oxygens is what it'll hold. Right here we fabricated a, a rack for the Tidweld reel. The customer is going to have a Tidweld reel which is exactly what's on my truck, hose reel. So it'll bolt to right here and we got a rack back here if you will out of half inch square stock 
ice chests, a uh, rod bucket, whatever else, my boots you want to throw up there. Um, the top deck is quarter inch plate. A lot of people asked why I went with such heavy plate. You know, when it comes to custom fabrication, I try not to worry so much about, about weight because I just, I don't know, my, my old soul wants things to last forever. So I just want it to last a long time. I just like it to be solid. So we went with quarter inch on the front top deck and I believe in the back too, but like this panel here that Stillwater Steel broke for us also is 14 gauge because they couldn't get some of these small lines in this roll with anything thicker. So this is only 14 gauge. Uh, the back is 3 16 like the tailboard and the, uh, the back quarter there is 3 16 We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Uh, of course, we got our filler neck, our DEF, and then uh, make sure I'm not forgetting anything else up here. Um, I talked about it in one of the videos, but I did end up capping this right here just because I think it looks cleaner and easier to wash. You know, you can get up here and shh. I don't be able to see it real well, but again, you can check out that video, kind of see see how I did that. And uh, we got this lockable. There was a few things the customer asked for. The fellow's name, last name is Gibson, so I went ahead and just had Stillwater still burn that in there for us. But uh, he asked for a few things. A few of those things were lockable lead wells lockable toolboxes, lockable uh, jack stand trunk, and a lockable rod box. So we made sure all those were lockable. And I, as you can see here, we welded a little, as you can see here, we welded a little plate just so he could put that up while he was working, you know. And so we got three lead wells that we cut in here for him. Ground, stinger, remote, we put uh, several one inch holes in the bottom for drainage. One thing I do want to point out is uh, the reason I went with plate, which a lot of guys might do nowadays, but is because my brother's two years older than me and he had an old welding bed at one time just with expanded down there. Real easy fabrication idea, you know, it doesn't take as long to do what we did there, but he's worked in bad areas where thieves took bolt cutters and just snipped that expanded metal and stole his leads out from underneath his lead well. So I just uh, wanted to point that out, how, you know, the reasoning behind the plate versus expanded metal. This welder slot, we dropped it down three inches. This is three by three quarter inch angle. Dropped it down three inches. That way you wouldn't have to bolt it down. This customer didn't know at the time whenever we started this project, which machine he wanted to go with. So we made it universal, meaning it will hold a machine like mine, an SAE 300, uh, an SA 200, uh, obviously any smaller gas machine it'll hold, but it will also hold a Miller, like a Miller 400, for instance. And that's what this hole here is for. A lot of people ask why this hole is here. On your Millers, the leads bolt to the front. So to make it as clean as possible, you just run your leads. Well, actually run them to your lead wells first and then up through this hole right here and bolt it to your machine. Versus on my machine, they bolt back here and I can go down in here and in through the back. You know, it's, it's a little cleaner back there, but if you, again, this is a universal setup. So that's what this hole here is for. All right, next we'll talk about the fenders. So these are, these are essentially, or they are, two 10 inch long radius 90s quartered and a quarter would actually be somewhere down here but we trimmed it back just to to make it look like it does here again you can check out the video to see exactly how we done it but then one neat thing that i wanted to point out is we put an inner fender in here that way it's i like that because it just really caps it off and it's easier to clean versus if we didn't have this inner fender you know, you got to get your wand up here and you got to try to clean in behind this and whatnot. So I really liked that I decided to add that inner fender because it just looks a lot cleaner, I think. So, all right, so we'll work our way back around the back of the truck. Like I said, this is 3 16 rolled plate. Again, Stillwater Steel rolled this for us from about here all the way to the center is a rolled piece of 3 16 plate. And uh, the radius, 
lot of people were asking about the radius whenever we were building this truck. The radius is 16 and some change, 16 inches and some change. So, you know, in other words, for those of you who may not know, this is a circle straight across this diameter. Well, half the distance right here is called radius. And so from here to here, we got 16 inches. So from here to here, we got roughly 16, a little over 16 inches because that matches the eight inch quartered 90s that we use down here to to create this roll situation so eight inch long radius 90s matches the roughly 16 a little over 16 inches radius all right so like i said i got my tail lights these are four and a half inch round tail lights they're dual resolution meaning they turn white and red so they're all four reverse lights and their brake lights and turn signals got them from wilkins chrome shop there in uh, blackwell oklahoma and we put some three quarter inch lights right here for our clearance lights right here i used six inch od pipe not six and five eighths but six inch od that's why it looks a little bit tighter in here so six inch od pipe for these i believe this is inch and a quarter pipe for our clearance lights or three quarter these holes back here are hand cut with the circle burner that we carry in the aros welding store on my truck i believe i had stillwater steel burn out the tailboard and they burned out all the lights and the tag and everything but everything on this tailboard was was hand cut with a torch uh, by myself so uh, my buddy trent with titanium diesel a good friend of mine he's the one who hooked up my tail lights and the backup camera got it working so i am not an electrician or a painter as you can see so trent hooked all these up so very thankful for him apparently I ain't no truck driver either, or as I'll explain here in a minute, I was extremely excited. Tell me this ain't exciting. And uh, just didn't think this part of the process all the way through. I then loaded it on my trailer and took it down the road to Line X, about 20 minutes from the house here, to the guys there in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Corey and David. They did a great job. I was super excited. Super exciting. Got her done at the old Line X. If you're ever in Stillwater, Oklahoma, come visit Corey and David. This was a very huge moment in the bed series. And like I said, it just makes it all one color and everything nice and clean. So I was really excited until after I got everything mounted, I found a spot that I messed up and I do plan on giving the customer a couple hundred dollars off because of this. I was really upset about it because, and I should have listened to my wife. She's always been the voice of reason and she's always, you know, looking ahead and trying to take good care of things. And she's trying to move slower and take extra precaution. But to be honest, I was so excited. Tell me this ain't exciting. To get this bed mounted after it was painted, I got in, I mean, I got in a hurry is what I did, which in the moment, I didn't feel like it was I was in a hurry because I took uh, straps and put underneath the, between the, the fender wells on my trailer to try to keep this from happening. And, uh, but it's still, but it still happened. It's over here on the passenger side. Here's a view of it here. Made me sick, but I am gonna try to patch it myself. I got some Linex in a can coming and I'm gonna touch it up. I'll give you a little clip here. But what I was gonna say was in the moment I thought I was taking my time we did it real slow I had you know straps to put in between but I could have used blankets which would have covered more surface area and less chance of doing what happened here and uh, luckily it's on the passenger side you know my luck usually in the past a lot of my falls happen on the driver's side you know which I feel is worse because everybody walks up to your driver's side door so I was thankful for that a lot of things to be thankful for but with that being said I want to share a little quick lesson here is there's a lot of things I've learned in my late 20s and early 30s and one of those things is actually thanks to the YouTube channel and thanks to our skeleton crew around here. One of those things is slowing down because for me I was I'm very much of a go 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 and like a production mindset and with the YouTube channel and the lack of help that we have around here it has caused me to have to slow down and so one of those things is taking time 
loading a welding bed on a trailer or taking time to set a bed on a, a truck, you know, and just being careful with the little detailed things. And so even though in the moment I was being super careful, like I literally remember breathing and, you know, telling David, the guy that painted the bed for us at Line X, he was on the forklift. And uh, like, I remember taking time to breathe and being patient, more patient than I used, than I would have been at 20 and uh, making sure it was on the right, making sure the straps were in there. And even though I was doing that level of, you know, what I thought was slowing down, it was brought to my attention after having a conversation with my wife that, hey, Austin, because she suggested, she said, hey, we have all those blankets, those moving blankets. And that's whenever it hit me that I didn't slow down enough. So even though you think you're doing good and you're, you know, in my case, slowing down and paying attention to details, you can slow down more and you can do better. Like, and this isn't to not give ourselves grace. We still need grace, especially after something happens like this, I noticed this fall that I put inside of this bed, there's always room for improvement. We need to give ourselves grace. Like I said, I needed to find grace within myself and give myself grace after it happened. But before things happen, always keep in mind that you can slow down more. Slowing down equals better quality, which equals better reputation, which equals a better business and better quality for your customers. It just, it, it goes all the way. It's a trickle effect, you know. Once you start learning to do it and start qu focusing on quality over quantity or, you know, efficiency or uh, not even efficiency, but because it, it does lead to efficiency, but productivity, I'll say, because productivity is different than efficiency. I'm pretty sure. Yes, it is different. And I, I was always very focused on productivity, productivity, productivity for whatever reason. I could go into that, but I won't here in this video. So slowing down is really important and that's a huge lesson I learned during this bed build. This is our spare tire access. Open it with a key, let your spare tire down. So these here, they look like sensors, but they are actually the tag light. Tag lights, I got four of them. Just got them off of Amazon. Leo was asking about those earlier and uh, I didn't even think, I'd already ordered them. I didn't even think to get them from Wilkins if Wilkins had any. I'm sure they obviously got some type of t uh, tag light, but anyway, and then our backup camera you might have seen. One thing I wanted to point out, I wanted to get a close-up of this uh, behind here, because a lot of you are concerned about this being tough enough back here. So I ended up putting some 3 8 by 2 flat running up and down right here to stiffen this rear end up. I can't get a good shot of it here, but there will be a short here on the channel before it was painted so you can see a little better what I'm talking about. All right, so over here on the passenger side, we've got a hole for one medium acetylene. Again, Stillwater Steel rolled this 10 gauge plate or something we welded up the seam or set screw to hold it in. This here is a rod box that'll hold four 50 pound boxes of rod. I will end up going back and putting some, before the customer comes and gets his truck, I'll put some weather stripping along the top of this and the toolbox lids that we're fixing to look at here. So before we get into the uh, trunk, this here is, they call it a Hoosier pole. Me and Leo were talking earlier and I don't know where the name originated from. I'd love to find out. Or actually Leo said he, he thought he heard that uh, somebody's last name might've been Hoosier, but those of you who don't know what a Hoosier pole is, a lot of welders use them on pipeline, like laying pipe, main line. You swing this pole around here, the pipe's running right here, and your Hoosier pole's hanging out here. You run your welding leads up over your Hoosier pole and you hang them on your Hoosier pole as you move from this weld to the next weld. That way it keeps you from having to roll up your leads every single time, because you're, you know, you make one eight inch weld, one 24 inch, whatever size of pipe you're on, you make that one weld, and you go to the next, so it's a lot of, it's a lot of moving throughout the line. So the Hoosier pole is supposed to save you some, some time. It's one way of being more efficient, if you will. All right, now let's take a look in the trunk. It is not watertight. It was designed primarily to hold four fold-up Sumner jack stands. We do have uh, four 
bolts, or I mean eight bolts total, holding this bed down. And two of those bolts are right here. I left access in the trunk. They're half inch bolts. And there's two in front there, or four in front of there, and two back here. Shocks, obviously, as you see here, because this is quarter inch plate with Linex on top. Like I said, all this is quarter inch plate. So good, good heavy duty plate. All right, we'll start with the, uh, oh, actually, D-rings to tie down. I, on my bed, I put my D-rings back here, but there's been many a times where I'm hauling like a, you know, a bottle to swap it or something, or like a propane bottle whenever we were traveling, and I really found it handy for the, like really a guy could almost put another hook in the middle. What I'm saying is with a D-ring here and a D-ring way up here, sometimes I wanted one in the middle is what I'm saying. So rather than putting you know, three on each side, I just moved them in a little bit so the straps would be closer to the middle of, you know, like a cylinder, for instance, so. All right, now let's open the toolboxes. So, as you can see here, we made them flush with the bedside. As to where on my truck, I made this one inch lip hang over right here. That's a lot faster to build. This is, takes a little more time. I'll talk about the uh, locking situation here in a minute because I made it just like mine also, and a lot of people wonder about that. Um, this, I consider old school, but super reliable. Rather than putting a shock in here, I just went with a, I welded a, uh, essentially a bolt right here with a nut on it, welded a piece of half inch cold roll to it. And then, so it just won't come off because it's threaded. And that's what keeps the lid up one thing that i really want to talk about when it comes to toolbox organization if you notice i only had linex prime or paint this inside i'm not sure what this is because from my 15 plus years of mobile welding and working with different tools and doing the different things that i've done i am still me and leo were talking about this today i'm still changing stuff in my boxes my current i literally did some work to my uh, passenger box the other day some more organizing if you will so i wanted this is a young guy a young guy that hasn't got very much experience in mobile welding at all so i'm gonna share that with him and explain to him why i didn't line x this because i want him to be able to come in here buff off some of this paint tack something here tack another divider here you know, you know, make it work for him and the tools he ends up buying or the type of work he's doing when he first gets started. Because depending on the type of work you do will depend on kind of tools you're gonna to carry. And so, you know, you're kind of constantly changing things as long as you have one rig. So for myself, that's a prime example. I have that one welding rig, I don't have another one. So when you just have one rig and you kind of find yourself doing one niche thing or whatever, like I'm not pipelining so much right now, so I've changed out a couple of tools. Well, to make the box work for what I'm doing now, I've changed it up, added some things. And so that's why I just put some one, two, three, four, five, six, four grinding discs up here. And then I literally just put a divider here and a divider here. But I mean, that was just a bare minimum but I mean, I would encourage him or anybody that's just getting started to actually not paint the inside of your boxes and work and tweak them. Work out of your truck and tweak them as you go. I guess I'll leave that open. All right. I'll go over here to the driver's side. Same thing. These lids are 10 gauge. You know, I've been talking about the thickness of everything. 316th side well the lids are 10 gauge and with the added line x it's plenty heavy enough and these are some pretty big boxes but on this side i did a little more um thinking if you will but i still didn't take you know i didn't spend lots of time making it customized to what i do because i don't know what this fellow is going to be doing but i did kind of think of a, a double level situation so i've got if you go watch some videos of us building these you'll know that this was part of this right here is all one piece and so and this is the fender down here so i just put these plates in here to create this bottom shelf this is a catch-all over here and then i just put a another shelf up here 
I did have some tools on hand like my torches. That's how I made these to get them the right size for a torch, you know. I had some squares and some levels and stuff to make sure certain stuff would fit in here, but I kind of, you know, if it was me, I would I would put dividers in certain areas depending on, you know, where I put my spacing tools, where I put my tool hole pins and stuff like that. And uh, over here I put a slot for a hammer is what I kind of envision. But again, he could change it, do whatever he wanted. And there's actually another piece of pipe down in here for files, spacing bands, or again, pipe wrench, whatever he wants to use. And like I said, he can cut off what he wants to. He can change whatever he wants, and I would actually encourage that. This here is our uh, fifth wheel turnover ball. We've got a BMW turnover, turnover ball. Pull out. Pull that out, turn that. It's got a little locking mechanism back here that we fabricated in one of the videos during the build series. This is a weld-in turnover ball. So it was only about yay big and I put my own cross members in here. But, and as you can see, I put it near the back. It's another thing the customer requested was put it near the back because of the style of this welding rig. Well, the machine is kind of close to your travel trailer or whatever trailer you may be pulling, so we move the ball back uh, about 12 inches from the back here. So, all right, so the locking situation we've got an Allen head in there, there's a nut welded on the end of here, and then got a piece of angle with a hole in it up here and a hole in the lip. So, whenever this closes. Those holes all align, and you tighten that screw, and then it's locked. You can't lift it up. Here's another little detail I added: just a half-inch piece of one-eighth plate to. Since these are flush-mounted, they can kind of be a pain to open. So I added a little tab to help open it. But so now they're good and locked. So that's the locking apparatus. I know a lot of people have been curious about that kind of a simple cleaner way looks a lot cleaner versus you know uh, we call that paddle whatever like we have on the trunk I'm sure they've got all kinds of fancier latches nowadays flush mounts but oh, old school a Ross don't know much about all that but this is something I actually changed on my truck because whenever I built my bed originally I put a gas shock in but they wear out I replaced them a time or two and I was tired of replacing them so now this guy won't have to replace anything. If anything, if he's working in a windy area, he might actually want to add a, you know, a little chain back here or something in case the wind blows, which not that it'll hurt it. Like at the end of the day, it could, this could go all the way back here and it's not gonna hurt it. But, you know, if you didn't want it doing that, you could always tack a little chain or something in there. To keep it from doing that. I think that pretty well covers it. Thank you all for joining us today. Thanks Leo for being here and helping film this video for us. My pleasure. Awesome, awesome. And uh, if you have any questions, let us know down in the comments. I might have missed something. I tried not to. I rehearsed this a couple times. Try not to forget anything. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for your patience. Those of you that have been waiting for all these weeks, I've been waiting on Line X, been waiting on, uh, of course I had to finish it. And there was just, there was just a lot going on, but I wanted to wanted to wait till it's completely finished so I could take you inside the toolboxes, explain to you my thoughts on toolbox organization. So if you're gonna build a bed yourself, I wanted to encourage you to maybe not paint the inside of your boxes, not paint your truck at all. Because from my experience, the more experience I get over the years, the more I can customize my mobile welding rig, you know, whether that's a pipeline style, whether that's a you know, a utility bed, whether you got a crane on your truck, whatever that looks like, you know, you got to fit your truck to what you're doing, but the more experience you have, the more you, you're you tuned in to your welding rig and the more you know what you want, what tools you want to carry, how, you, you know, you see different things over the years. Leo and myself both been around a lot of trucks. Uh, Leo's built way more trucks than I have, but, um, you know, you see things, you try things, uh, and so it's, I guess what I'm saying is if it's your first welding rig, it's a good idea to leave it blank and work out of it to kind of customize it. With that being said, I understand the crave to want to paint it. That's why I suggest leaving the inside not painted so at least you could customize 
in here, which is where, from my experience, a lot of customization comes from because I love organizations and it makes me feel good, makes me feel more efficient, makes me feel more valuable to my customers. Whenever I know where stuff's at, it's a lot easier to get to. One of the add-ons that I did in my passenger box was my die grinder tools. So for those of you who may not know, a die grinder takes two little wrenches to change out the bit. Well, every time I wanted to use my die grinder, I dreaded it because the, the tools just weren't where I needed them. So I, you know, so I finally built me a little slot for my two wrenches and all my bits and stuff. So now I'm excited to use my die grinder. You know, I, I'm over there, I'm like, it's way quicker. I set it up here, get my wrenches, put out my new bit, put on my new bit and go to work. It's a lot faster, a lot more exciting. And so I just wanted to share that with those of you that may be new. Anyway, thanks again for being here. I appreciate you showing up. Don't forget to check out the pipe fence course. You can find it at arosswelding.school. We've got some good deals going on right now, some good bundle deals with our quick rig course and the pipe fence course. Enrollment closes September 26th. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, learn something every day.